Paleontologists have been unearthing and studying fossils for over a hundred years, but the prehistoric world still has surprises up its sleeves that continue to baffle us today. From fossilized babies to clues to human origins, these fossil discoveries just might change the face of science as we know it. Million Year Eggs I'm sure you've heard about the Thousand Year Eggs, an Asian delicacy that looks and smells like a rotten egg but is still loved by many, including a few Westerners. But how about Million Year Eggs? Don't you worry, these eggs are not for eating, but rather the source of an incredible discovery that may change the face of science as we know it. 2019, a group of Canadian paleontologists led by Robert Rice discovered a clutch of 20 dinosaur eggs hidden under a fossil bed. The scientists found the eggs in the Lufeng Formation, a large fossil graveyard in Hunan Province, China. The eggs date back to 190 million years, making them the oldest dinosaur fossils ever discovered. But that's not the only thing that makes these eggs significant to science. Inside some of the eggs were the preserved remains of baby dinos. These are so hard to come by, so much so that some paleontologists consider them the holy grail of paleontology. But still, these fossilized baby dinos hold something more consequential than anything like it before. The bones contained in these eggs contain a specific protein, the exact protein that scientists are using right now to try and resurrect the woolly mammoth through de-extinction. Just imagine, if scientists can pull this off, we'll have a real Jurassic Park on our hands, and I'm not even going to go into how bad of an idea that probably is. According to Rice, the eggs belong to the Lephangosaurus, a long-necked plant eater that lived in the early Jurassic period. Whoever laid this clutch shows the perfect spot on the banks of a river. When the river flooded, it covered the eggs with mud, preserving the eggs so that we in the present can learn more about them. Show me some skin. The Badlands of Alberta. Now it sounds like the setting for a B-movie depicting a dystopian future, but it's unfortunately not so. However, it's still a pretty cool place and amateur and professional fossil hunters flock to go in search of fossils. In fact, between 400 to 500 dino skeletons have already been discovered in that area. Dino bones are so common in that place you can easily find dino teeth just by walking around. That was what Terry Kesky was doing on August 9, 2021. The full-time biologist slash part-time fossil sleuth was exploring the part of the Badlands called the Dino Provincial Park, hoping to find some T-Rex teeth. But she actually stumbled upon the discovery of a lifetime. While walking along a cliff wall, she noticed a fossilized bone jutting out of the rock face. She looked closer at the fossil and quickly realized she wasn't looking at any ordinary bone. It was more preserved than anything she had ever seen before. In fact, this dino bone still had its skin clinging to it. Now, this is a rare discovery because when decomposition sets in, it's usually the skin that's the first to go. Kasky realized the importance of her discovery, so she quickly informed the Royal Tyrell Museum of Paleontology of her findings. The bone was that of a hadrosaur, a duck-billed plant eater that was so plentiful they were called the cows of the Cretaceous period. Finding this dino's intact skin is a boon to science, allowing paleontologists a rare look into these animals' actual appearance. Prehistoric Gladiators one thing's about epic dino battles, there are two combatants that immediately spring to mind. On one side is the tank-like plant eater armed with armor plates and three sharp horns, the Triceratops. And on the other, the undisputed king of all predators during its era, a massive biped brandishing razor-sharp teeth and a bad attitude, the T-Rex. I'm not sorry. It's possible that this prehistoric clash of the titans happened. Both did exist during the Cretaceous era and lived within the same general locale, so it's impossible not to think these two species regularly butted heads. Literally in the Triceratops case. But then again, without any concrete proof that it really transpired, you can never really be sure. Well, we can be 100% certain now thanks to a fossil discovery in 2006. In that year, fossil hunters found an almost complete T-Rex fossil along with the bones of a massive Triceratops. It was seemingly locked in battle at the time of its death. The dueling dinosaurs are now at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences and the museum's plan to display them to the public in 2024. However, if private collectors had their way, we would never get the chance to see this epic battle unfold before our very eyes. For years, the fossils were in a private collection. After extensive legal wrangling and thanks to generous donations from various private foundations, government entities, and non-profit organizations, the museum was able to purchase the fossils for six million. The fossils are now under the scrutinous study, and everybody is excited about one thing in particular. To find out where the two died while in battle, or if they just happened to be near each other when they died. Snake in Amber Remember when all those dinosaurs from Jurassic Park came from? If you don't, let me tell you. They all stem from a mosquito they found preserved in a chunk of amber. 
Thanks to questionable movie science and bad decisions, Jurassic Park was born. Of course, things like these only happen in movies. Or do they? In a discovery that eerily follows the movie's plot, scientists found the remains of a baby snake perfectly preserved in amber. This tiny reptile crawled out of its shell 99 million years ago and was immediately engulfed in tree resin, eliminating any chance of it growing up. Explorers found this amber tomb in Myanmar, and this place yielded many things trapped in amber, most being prehistoric insects and plants. However, it is the first time they found a prehistoric vertebrae such as a snake, and scientists are very excited about it. Inside the piece of amber was the skeleton of the prehistoric snake, Xiaphis myanmarensis. There were 97 bones in total, and the tiny thing measured about 1.9 inches long, but that wasn't the only thing found because along with it was also preserved in amber was a piece of shed skin from a larger snake. This finding is significant because it gives scientists a unique insight into the biology of prehistoric snakes at a level never seen before. Four-Legged Snake 2015, scientists in Brazil found something they really weren't ready for, a fossil of a snake with legs. Now, it bears mentioning that fossils of snakes with legs have been found before this, but this one is special. You see, all others that came before it only had hind legs, and this one had all four legs present. Needless to say, this was the first of its kind. Scientists believe that the limbs were not used for walking, they were simply too delicate for the task. Rather, they think the limbs helped the snake grab onto its prey. The fossil also showed adaptations specific to burrowing, which gives credence to the idea that snakes developed on land and not in water as was previously thought. The 19.5 centimeter long fossil was named Tetrapodphus amplectus, and it shares many features that modern day snakes have. This includes hooked teeth, flexible jaw and spine, and snake-like scales. The legs were far from vestigial. Although small, they're highly specialized and sport skinny fingers and toes, which terminate in tiny claws. The discovery of Tetradolphus amplectus further establishes a link between snakes and lizards, giving scientists further clues about the mystery of evolution. The Tully Monster With 97% of the world's oceans still unexplored, it's only natural to conclude that a lot about it remains unknown, especially regarding the creatures that lurk beneath its surface. This fact, of course, gives rise to myths and legends about mermaids, sea monsters, and the Megalodon. I know you all love that. Some have even claimed to have concrete evidence that these creatures exist. But then again, none of the evidence is conclusive. Thing is, even if we do have definitive proof that some strange sea creature does exist, the evidence found leads to more questions than answers. The Tully monster falls squarely into this category. This torpedo-shaped sea monster has body features that seem to break the mold of what sea creatures are supposed to look like. Its eyes jut out from the middle of what scientists think its head is. It has a long appendage that looks like a nose but ends in a claw, and it also has no visible mouth. Looks like something ripped directly out of a fantasy book. But it's real, and we have fossil evidence. The first fossil of the Tully monster was found in a coal mine, and more than 2,000 of them have been found since then. These fossils date back to 309 million years ago, and while many studies have been conducted on said fossils, the creature remains a puzzle to be solved. In fact, after long years of research, scientists have only arrived at one conclusive fact. The Tully monster was a vertebrate. How it lived, and what it ate, and when it became extinct is still unknown, however. Once the puzzle that is the Tully monster has been solved, it will forever change the way we think about how evolution works. Stupendous Turtle Can you imagine a turtle the size of a car? Well, stop imagining because scientists have found one. Paleontologists have unearthed new fossils of a massive turtle in Colombia's Tatacoa Desert and Venezuela's Aramaco region. It was called Stupendimus Geographicus, and it made home on the lakes and rivers of what is now modern-day Southern America. This was from 13 million to around 7 million years ago. This creature grew up to 13 feet long and weighed 1.25 tons. Fossils of this ancient turtle had been found before, but the new discovery has provided a comprehensive understanding of the giant creature more profound than ever before. The males of these species had front-facing horns on both sides of their shells, and scientists think these horns were used to battle other males over territory or mating rights, as evidenced by deep scars found on the fossils. Females, however, were hornless, and this is interesting because fighting among turtles still happens to this day, especially between male tortoises. Much like modern-day turtles, Stupendimus had a varied diet. Hunted fish, snakes, even caiman. It also gorged itself on mollusks, seeds, and fruits. As large as it was, Stupendimus geographicus was still not the largest turtle to walk on the planet. That distinction belongs to Archelon, a species that reaches 15 feet in length. Old Human Jaw Scientists have never stopped looking for the origins of modern humans. The discovery of an unassuming human jaw in 2002 has brought them a clearer understanding as to where we all came from. 
Found inside Mislaya Cave in northern Israel, this human jawbone was dated back to be 180,000 years old. This upper jaw was also contained teeth, did not belong to a Neanderthal, and was confirmed to be that of a modern human. This is also the oldest human fossil found in Africa. All these points have made scientists rethink when exactly our first ancestors migrated out of Africa and eventually populated the globe. In fact, this discovery revealed that the human species ventured out of Africa some 50,000 years earlier than previously thought. It also reinforces the thinking that modern humans overlap with other human species such as Neanderthals much longer than we realize. Before this discovery, the fossil record suggested that Homo sapiens first made an appearance in Africa some 200,000 years ago, and the first wave of human migration didn't happen until around 50 to 60,000 years ago. This jawbone has made scientists think these migrations could have happened as early as 120,000 years ago. See you all next time.